Hey everybody, welcome back to a live video from Bolton eBikes. This is something a little bit different, uh, but I wanna try this a little bit more often so we can get some interaction. We have tons of comments that are coming on the YouTube videos, but I'm hoping this gives people a chance to ask questions live. Now, the video that I had planned for last Friday, I had the Glide Cruiser outside here at the shop, had the camera set up, and it just didn't want to connect. So working on that. But in the meantime, uh, Chris from Glide Cycles has picked up the uh, the bike, the stand-up cycle, and taken it back. So I don't have it here to show you on camera anyway. Uh, but there's a few things that I didn't get to do in that video that I would like to talk about. So I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, and uh, just kind of give you a quick rundown of what I, I think about it beyond the review uh, and some things about the stand-up cycles that I didn't get to talk about because I didn't want to cram that video with too much information. I wanted to give you guys basically a quick introduction that says, you know, here's what it is, here's what it looks like, uh, and just basically explain what is this because I know it's a little bit different. It kind of looks like a scooter. It kind of is a scooter, but then in other ways, it just completely isn't. So here we go. We're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. First things first. Let's get the the website up here. So I'm gonna share the website. Dun dun dun. Here we go. Okay. Awesome. So here we have Glidesdale Adventures. They have public safety. They have retail direct. There's a few different things going on here. So first thing I talked about, of course, was just retail, buying these bikes for your own personal use. Uh, and uh, that's obviously what most people are doing with these things is just or, or electric bicycles in general, they just wanna go out and have fun. Uh, and that's what I talked about on the video, uh, but there's more. Uh, and for all of those that are asking questions, I forgot to mention this right out front, uh, like uh, Mike, is there a way to fit an e-bike to a person? Uh, Dexter says something about international shipping. Uh, I'm gonna get to all of those questions. If they are about the glide bike specifically, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll get your question up on screen and we'll answer it. And if it's about something else, I'm gonna leave a few minutes at the end or you can just ask me anything you want. <laughs> I don't know if I'll answer it or I'll, you know, or if you like the answer, but I'll, I will do my best to answer whatever you want. Uh, cynical zombie, hey, that's a valid question because this is a new thing that we're doing, what streaming software, uh, using something called StreamYard. So if anybody has any tips on how to make this even better, uh, let me know, but that is what I'm using today. So far, I like it. Uh, if it works, we're gonna keep using it. I am gonna get some cameras set up for e-bike reviews outside in the future so we can keep doing this, but better. Okay, so retail, you guys already know about that. Obviously, you can just buy one of these and go have fun with it. Uh, but there is more. So let's jump into public safety. This is pretty interesting. So if you're on uh, their website, which is glidecycles.com, you have retail direct, and then you have this thing called public safety. And this is something I talked uh, in person uh, with Chris a lot about. Um, but here he actually has the Glide Patrol PS1 Defender, a 1000 watt version. You have the Enforcer, and then you have the Panther, which is 2000 watts. And these are police or security guard type models. So it's pretty cool that he actually has police departments. There's some here in California, and I know he's been talking to, to others in other states that are using these for patrol. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I have in the past done things uh, where I need to talk to a lot of people and just be out in, in public dealing with people. And I found that riding a bicycle was so much better than walking and so much better than driving. Because if you are on something like a bicycle, 
you can stop and you can talk to everybody. Um, you know, just getting around downtown areas, it's faster. Uh, there's a lot, I, I can just see how this works. And being a stand up cycle, you're not having to hop on and off or over the bike. You know, if you've got a bunch of gear on, which obviously they probably have, it makes it easier to carry. Uh, so pretty cool. You guys, I assume, probably didn't know, uh, but you can basically buy fleets of these if you, um, you know, run a police department or anything like that. And it's a, a good way to get around urban areas uh, as opposed to walking. Uh, offers a lot of the flexibility of a bicycle, um, but, you know, it's, it's just a, a more friendly way to talk with the general public. So I really like that. Uh, there's a video on here, you know, Elk Grove PD uh, demo video. So you can see, you know, they're all trying it out. That's here in California. Um, but like I said, he's he's working on other departments like this in different areas too. Uh, so pretty cool. Um, just reading through your comments. Uh, nothing about glide cycles. So I'm going to skip back over here. Uh, so that was something I wanted to share. Uh, who knows? If you know anybody who is in the... Uh, you know, security or, you know, any sort of patrol type anything, uh, let them know. Uh, oh, now I got to show this. Tom became a YouTube member. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And uh, we're happy to have you. Now, the second thing, or third thing, I guess, um, but that is, obviously, I, I just mentioned retail. Now we have public safety. And then there's also something called Glidesdale Adventures, uh, which those are basically tour and rental. And let me jump over to that. And I'm sure Chris can, can correct anything if you contact him if I say anything wrong. But I just want to share this information because I think these things are cool. Um, and I'm going to jump through the questions. I want the giveaway one. We we didn't do a giveaway on these. Uh, maybe you guys can make a big push to Chris over at Glide Cycles and tell him you want to see a giveaway. Don't have that planned. The one that I got to use was already being sold, so I did not get a chance to give one of these away yet, perhaps in the future. Um, now, will I be selling these in my store? Uh, I have considered it. I'm not sure yet. It's not set in stone, um, but it's definitely a conversation that is happening. Uh, if there's enough demand, if enough people want them, uh, then I'd be more than happy to to do it, to stock them here, service them here, sell them from here, and of course, you know, ship around the country. Um, but that remains to be seen. So right now, I'm just getting the information out there, let you guys know about them, and seeing what happens. <laughs> Eddie, sounds like an infomercial. If only I was getting paid uh, to do an infomercial, but I'm not. I'm just sharing all of this information from free. I don't have any formal relationship with Glide Cycles. They haven't paid me for any of this. Um, this is all just about sharing more information about electric bicycle-like things. And I know this isn't Glide Cycles related, but I do like Pedro's comment comment. I wish there'd be e-bike clubs so people can enjoy these bikes, go out together and ride in interesting places. I, I agree. That would be awesome. That would be a lot of fun. What about doing an affiliate link with Glide Cycles? Who knows? Maybe that's something we do to uh, to get started. Okay. So Glidesdale Adventures. What is that? Uh, they're guided tours. So they have one of these set up in Napa Valley. So here in California, over in the wine country. So if you think these things are kind of cool, but you're not sure if you'd buy one, but hey, you want to take a vacation and go through the nice rolling hills of Napa, uh, you can do that on one of these. You can go do a tour and just, here you see, they have groups of these that get together and just ride around on these. And I know Chris is working on another uh, tour set up in Florida, he mentioned. I think he's got another contact they're starting to set up in Hawaii. Uh, so this is something that's going to happen, you know, throughout the United States, I assume, is going to be where he targets things first. Um, 
But just like people used to do like, you know, Segway tours or, you know, there's some people that do e-bike tours. Now you can have these Glidesdale Adventures, which is kind of their, their name for these tours. So this is something anybody can do. He's, I don't know if, it's not necessarily a franchise. I think it's, well, it does say licensed territories. So they're kind of doing some sort of licensing deal where you can basically be a part of their tour setup if you, you know, want to set this up around the country. So uh, looks like a lot of fun. I would be interested to do any of these tours. I don't know how well this video is going to play if I try and do this. Oh, it's not going to do that. That was worth a shot. You know, I think I can get this to work. Hold on. I'm going to just see if I can get the, the video going here. As you can tell, the software here is new to me, but I'm figuring it out. Oh, it's a... For some reason, the video is on Facebook. Well, whatever. There we go. Some close-up shots. So, so that's the area. This is the Napa uh, tour area. So that's what it would look like. And of course, he's you know talking about things. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what that's like. Uh, so Edward, you're going to be doing e-bike tours in Florida this fall, but wildlife e-bike tours. Bears, panthers, and birds of prey. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, let us know what part of Florida you are in, because who knows? Uh, that would be that'd be fun to check out. Um, let's see. It would be national parks, state parks, Texas. Yeah, I think anywhere you have some nice scenery where you just want to get out and just kind of tour the area, but get places faster than walking, but not like be trapped in your car. I think these. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Uh, I like the idea of an adult-sized scooter. I live on gravel roads. Yeah, these uh, these would totally work on gravel roads. Uh, when I picture a scooter, that's something that it would not be able to do, but these most definitely can. So, a lot of fun. I uh, I really like them. Now I have to. Uh, I guess jump on to other questions from this point. I said I would be happy to answer other questions besides things about the glide cycles. So go ahead, lay it on me. Let's, uh, if you have any questions just about Blackbird bikes, about, you know, Fox Bats, Avengers, Crusaders, what's new, the members, uh, the research technician level, uh, they got a video out this week, another live video where I explained some things about the new bikes that are coming. I'm not going to reveal all of that here publicly to everyone else. Uh, but if you want to know about new bikes, I'm willing to give you some little tidbits of information. Uh, if you want production updates, whatever it is, ask away. Let's just let's just do this right here. Ask me anything. I'm going to put this on screen. Boom. There we go. Okay, comments are coming in. <laughs> um, should we should we let uh, let your boss know? I'm just I'm just kidding. We'll get that. Up there. <laughs> I like your up in your stream game. Look into the stream deck. Oh yeah, I I have already looked. I've been looking at the stream deck for months. By the way, uh, I think those are really awesome. So I think I think I'm definitely going to look into that. How about some downhill in San Francisco? I don't know what the question is really there. How fast do you want to go? I don't know. Let me know. Um, let's see. There's Tom. This is a comment more than a question, but I'm volunteering teaching fellow stroke survivors, and I would really love to discuss some solutions I could show members as we grow and refer them to a dealer with your kind of integrity. Uh, interesting. Uh, that's I've seen some really interesting things on like I'm sure online. I'm sure you're already aware. Uh, of what riding a bicycle can do for certain medical conditions. It can be really good in some cases. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, with a stroke, everything is different. But yeah, I think e-bikes, there could be possibly a fit, depending on what the issue is. Um, Brian, one of your people emailed me about solar charging of e-bikes, like when I do the divide trail. Awesome. That is uh, quite the feat to do the divide. You mentioned you guys were doing research. Yes, I have been doing research 
on um, solar charging. I think we have a really good setup planned out. I found a company here in the US that makes a US product that is extremely efficient, like 96% from the solar panel to your lithium ion battery. It's awesome. And there's nothing else in between. Like you don't have to have an inverter or this or that. It's basically solar panel to this device, which charges your battery. Super simple. Or just, we're honestly just working on wiring and connections to make it plug and play. So that's the, that's the thing we're working on. And I definitely want to have a solar system, solar charging system out sometime this summer, if we can get the right connections. Um, <laughs> connections being connectors and connections for somebody that has the connectors. Uh, Will you be doing more vintage style bikes? Some that look like vintage motorcycles. Uh, the only one we have right now is the Cheetah, which we are getting a few more, possibly at the end of this month, definitely in May. I've thought about doing a special Bolton e-bikes version with Revy bikes. Uh, I haven't worked on that lately, but I would like to do it. I think I have a cool color combo and some extra features we could add in that would make it really awesome. Uh, so the cheetah is the only one right now and the only thing for the next several months. Uh, Bolton e-bikes, I have a question. This must be Jessica. Uh, I don't know what her question is because I haven't gotten to it. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Uh, she's chatting with us here too. Uh, if an e-bike seller goes out of business, are you out of luck when it comes to getting parts or services? Not necessarily. It depends on the bike, the components used. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, Bionics. That was kind of a, a infamous case, if you will. Uh, but they had their hardware, their batteries, controllers, everything was so locked down that you couldn't easily replace or repair things, even when they were in business, unless you got parts from them. So when they went out of business, that was a problem. Uh, with most e-bike companies, the parts are a little more generic. Uh, I could see like, you know, Rad Power is not going to go out of business. They're huge, but you know, let's say Rad Power goes out of business. They have a proprietary battery. Now all of a sudden, everybody has to figure out you know, how to replace the battery. But if there's demand, somebody's gonna step in and make parts for it. So uh, I guess my best advice is either find somebody you think is gonna be around for a while or that has parts that are, are gonna be replaceable at some point, or if they're a big enough company, some aftermarket company will step in and they'll, they'll make something. Uh, Michael, in the market for an e-bike for hunting, I weigh 250, 6'3". Is it possible to hook up a pull-along trailer for white-tailed deer? Any recommendations? Uh, yes, just about any bike, honestly, you can hook up a trailer to. Sometimes you have to mess with the trailer mounts, but uh, definitely. Uh, as far as hunting specifically, uh, the biggest bike that we've got height-wise that I think would work great is one of the Warthog models. Could be the hub motor, could be you know, the mid-drive. Uh, I want to get a video out on the mid-drive warthog that has the chain because I don't feel like as many people know that one exists. That's kind of like the sweet spot for range and performance. Uh, and most people go to the belt version, which is sold out. Uh, but one of the warthogs would be awesome. Uh, if you don't want to spend that much or you don't need the range, then, then something like the Sabre or the Fox Bat uh, with a mid-drive motor where you can gear down low for hauling things uh, tends to work very well. Well, now I got to scroll up. There's a bunch of comments. I'm going to have to move faster here. I bought a November batch Blackbird. Will I see it soon? Yes. We're trying to get all Blackbirds prior to the spring batch out this month. So if you have a September, November, whatever it is, Blackbird, you should see a tracking number uh, sometime in the next. It could be this. Well, it's Friday already. Could be next week. Could be the week after. Uh, but we're trying to get all of them out this week or this month. And then that way we're on track. For when the spring bikes start showing up next month, they can start shipping out immediately. So we're actually going to get, we're going to start catching up and we're continually catching up, closing the gap on those Blackbird orders all the time. Uh, Brian, I don't know what this means. I, sorry. <laughs> um, Steven, yes, new fat bikes, prices and deliveries. There are new fat bikes in the works. Uh, the current version of the Lancer is almost sold out. Uh, I had more put into production months ago. They're still a few months out, uh, but I've got a whole bunch of Lancers coming in a new color combination 
kind of to pay homage to the actual Lancer aircraft. And then there might be some other slight tweaks and improvements to it as well. Uh, I'm actually sent a message just this morning to the guys that make the bike and said, hey, I know production's behind. Can we make a last minute change? We'll see what happens with that. Uh, but that's one that's coming. Uh, something, something new related to the Blackbird is coming this year. The research technician level members already know about that. Uh, you can always join uh, that level of the membership here on YouTube and go watch that video I released on Wednesday of this week if you want to know more about what that is. Uh, and then some people ask about a bike that is a kind of a combination of the Blackbird and the Fox Bat, like all the features of the Blackbird, but with a mid-drive motor. And we did decide to do something like that, but better. The, the thing that's better on it is just probably going to blow your mind a little bit or you're not going to expect it. You definitely won't expect it, that's for sure. It's gonna be awesome. Not sure the glides would be a fit because physical activity rehab is important. Uh, yeah, certainly a way it makes sense. Any way to get in touch. If you're asking about the glide bikes in particular, then uh, you can go to glidecycles.com. Uh, if you're asking about Bolton e-bikes, obviously go to boltonebikes.com and uh, send us a message there. How are the late spring Blackbird shipping progressing? So uh, spring bikes, the first batch, because there's multiple shipments for spring that are coming to us, uh, but the first container has left from overseas and is on the way. Uh, there's a second container that's leaving sometime in the next few days from overseas to come over. So... That's why we're pushing so hard to get all the current Blackbirds out this month. So we are basically, we can just hit the ground running as soon as those show up, they start going out. So uh, they're looking good. We're looking at May to start getting them out. If everything arrives, maybe we get them all out in May, but that kind of depends on shipping and how quickly they get here. Uh, so that's up in the air a little bit. Uh, as an example, we had uh, you know a 40 foot container load of bikes ready to go the other week. Um, but there were no 40 foot containers available for the boat, just none in the past. I've even mentioned that I bought containers <laughs> to, to make sure bikes get here. I don't need any more containers. I got enough of them around here now. Um, but we had to wait, you know, a couple weeks to get them loaded on the boat because there just weren't containers, uh, available. LOL. Come on, Jessica. Wh what does that mean? You're laughing about what? I don't know. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's been on the fence for a while on their first e-bike? Hmm. I suppose it depends on what's holding you back. I mean, that's that's my question. What are you waiting for? Um, bikes are always going to get better, but right now they're they're really good. They're awesome. So I don't know. I guess uh, I'm kind of a if I have an idea or something, I just I typically dive right in, do a bunch of research, and I just I just do it. So. I'm assuming you've done a bunch of research. Uh, I don't. I guess if you're on the fence, maybe you know. Maybe here's some advice. If you're on the fence, I'm guessing you haven't ridden one. Because if you've ridden an electric bike, you won't be on the fence anymore. Maybe you're on the fence about the type of e-bike you want to buy. So then you need to find somebody or a bike shop or somewhere that has one you can go test ride, and that will make up your mind. So I guess that's my advice. Go test ride what you're thinking about buying or something close to it. And I think that will immediately just help you decide if it's something you want to do or not, or what type of bike you want to buy. All right, this is totally Jessica, because I didn't type this. I want to know what questions our awesome viewers have about joining us on Bolton Labs. OK, good, fair enough. Uh, is there a seat option? Oh, if you're referring to the Glide Cruisers, then Yes, there actually is a seat option. I know it's not shown on most of the photos and things on the website there, but yes, he has designed a seat option. I know he's done them for some customers, and that is something that can be added on any of those. So you can stand up, but you can have a, a seat added, so you can stand up or sit down. So it doesn't come with them standard, but it is an option. Once you go Bolton Labs, you never go back. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. I'm scrolling down through more comments and things here. 
thought. There's a YouTube video by a guy touring with an e-bike using solar panels. So awesome. Uh, yeah, I've seen videos in the past of people using solar panels for like really long tours. They have these massive trailers. Um, you know, somebody did like a ride across Australia on an e-bike with that. Somebody else was trying to do a round the world trip with things. So there's, there's definitely stuff like that happening. Uh, can you give us an update on the Foxbat production status? Yes. Uh, as with everything, delays, 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 right? And, and I, I've been bugging manufacturers, uh, production facilities everywhere and be like, hey, you guys need to give me updates like whenever you know. And every once in a while they slip and don't let me know until I bug them. So uh, Foxbats, I was hoping originally they would be, well, when I first ordered them, We'll jump back a little further. The Fox bats that I'm waiting for, and probably you're waiting for, were originally supposed to be delivered in like January of this year, like four months ago. Uh, but I always hedge ahead, especially now by months, and I'd rather get things sooner, but that hasn't happened. So uh, May was the latest estimate, and it's possible they may not actually leave China in May now. So that's the most up-to-date information I have as of this week is that they haven't left and they're probably not going to leave this month. Things are just too backed up. They're not going to be able to get them out until May, which depending on how long the shipping takes means it could be June until the Fox bats actually arrive to us and we get them shipped out. So that's why the website was updated this week to say, you know, May, June. Um, I'm really pushing them to get them here as soon as possible, but that realistically, unfortunately, they may have to be pushed back into June. Floyd is wondering if I offer a maintenance stand to maintain my Blackbird. Uh, I don't, that's a good question. Park Tools is great for bike stands, bike clamps, all sorts of different things. Uh, I don't sell those, but if you look them up, Park Tools, they're all over the place, any e any bicycle supplier will often sell a lot of their parts and pieces. You know, they're on Amazon. Uh, and they make clamps that have uh, a work stand. They also make clamps that you can bolt to like a, a post or a pole or something in your garage if you have, or a wall. Uh, and they're, they have some really heavy duty ones that actually would work for e-bikes. So I would recommend checking something like that out. Uh, and as Jessica mentioned here, we offer the handlebar jack. And that is a simple solution to that problem as well that's much cheaper. So uh, either one of those could work depending on how you want to do things. Uh, Pedro, do you recommend spending a bit more and buy a mid-drive over a hub? That really is a personal preference. Uh, somebody asked me about a video that was posted on YouTube by another channel the other day where he basically was like, mid-drives are better than everything and hub motors are terrible. I didn't agree with everything he said in the video. Some of his points were valid, but when it comes down to it, what do you want? If you want maximum top speed, if you want maximum torque, and you don't mind shifting through the gears, then a mid-drive is great and a ton of fun. However, <laughs> if you just want something a little bit simpler to use and less to think about, then a hub motor, usually people find easier to use and a little bit simpler. So it really depends on your, your comfort level with bicycles and shifting and what you want. So a hub motor may not have quite as much top end speed, but if you're happy with you know, 28, 30 miles an hour, some of the hub motors will easily do that. So it just depends on what you actually want. I have people literally that will come into my shop, say, I'm here to order the Fox Bat. I just want to test ride it first. And they're like, oh, sure, I'll ride the Blackbird while I'm here. Why not? You know, you might as well. They ride the Blackbird with a hub motor or some other bike. It doesn't have to be the Blackbird. And they're like, wow, that that's really smooth. Like, I like it. It was easy. Like, I actually want a hub motor bike now. Now, the opposite happens, too. Somebody comes wanting a hub motor bike. They drive a mid-drive. And they're like, oh, I love the performance I can get out of this. So it really is just a personal preference. And they both are good for different reasons. And I think both are going to be around for a long time. And that's why I sell both. I'd love to see a B52 e-bike that had a sidecar. Uh, that would be awesome. 
Do you have any new plans for a mid-drive road bike? Interesting question, Ted. Uh, I'm going to have to say no. I don't have any immediate plans for that. Not to say that I might not carry a bike from another brand or something that fits that description, but don't have anything on the roadmap. Uh, I haven't had a lot of requests for it. And, you know, when you go with bigger tires or fat tires, you can go on road, but you can also go on off-road. So more people honestly ask for that. Uh, I do think it'd be a lot of fun, uh, but I don't have any plans to make one. Why are there not more manufacturers making bikes for people are 400 pounds plus? We're not getting smaller as a nation. There seems to be money left on the table not addressing this. Uh, I agree. I've actually had a discussion with somebody who wanted to start up an e-bike company specifically addressing this, and I told them, that's a great idea. You should do it. <laughs> like, um, you know, that's, that's a market that's missed. That's actually a common question that I get probably a weekly basis, maybe once a week, twice a week, somebody emails uh, and says, hey, I'm not finding anything that fits for this. Um, now, I know it's not a bicycle, uh, but as an interesting note, if you guys didn't see it in the video on the Glide Cruiser, that frame is made here in California, and it's designed to handle 650 pounds. So that'll do it. It's not a bicycle, so it may not be quite what you're looking for, uh, but it can do it. So just something to think about there. Let's see. Is a mid-drive better on steep hills on 5-2 live in Oakland, one of the ride roads, trails in the redwoods? Generally speaking, yes, a mid-drive would do better on steep hills because you can shift into a lower gear. Uh, and at 5 foot 2, something like maybe like the Stunner X from Bike Tricks comes with a 24-inch wheel size, step-through frame, has a 750-watt mid-drive motor. Something like that would be great. It'd go on the road, it'd go on the trails. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite types of bikes for something like that. All right, scrolling through more comments. Good questions, you guys. I, I appreciate uh, this. Um, Sean says, I just broke 5,500 on that Volador you sold me. So 5,500 miles, I'm assuming is what that is. That's, that's awesome. That's a lot of miles. I wish there were more 26 by four tire types available. Uh, I'm curious, what are you looking for, Blake, that you're not finding? Because there are a lot of fat tire options on the market these days. Uh, I have studded tires in the back, which I didn't put online because we're getting into spring already. So I got a whole bunch of studded tires. I'll be ready for winter. Uh, I mean, you can get slicks, you can get various road tires. Uh, I'm curious, what are you looking for uh, that you can't find because it might exist already and you just don't know or haven't seen it. <laughs> this is Jessica. Trails in the Redwoods, take me with you. Uh, that would be a lot of fun. I, I, I agree. Let's see. Uh, and then about that uh, comment on, on weight, only thing I found are adult e-trikes, a few cargo bikes. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, some of the cargo bikes are designed for uh, more carrying capacity. And, you know, maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for, but it can be an option. So, well, I think I actually caught up to the comments here. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed doing this interactive live video. And if so, we will do more. I am going to try and do more bike reviews. I have bikes coming, uh, so we're definitely going to do some. We're going to get those outside, get some more cameras and things so we can be flexible on moving around and uh, getting this all done. I think it's going to be fun. Uh, last question here. We'll make it three more questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put uh, three more questions on the screen. This one's not a question. I accidentally clicked on it, but I put a twenty by five four Duro tire, maybe a motorcycle tire. Uh, I have seen people do that. I have messed with that a little. I thought about making a video on that. But let's jump back to this one because this is a, a good topic. When an e-bike has a weight limit, what exactly is the limiting factor? There are several things that it could be. Uh, usually the frame manufacturer has a weight limit on the frame itself. So sometimes, usually I would say that's the number you see listed as they just say, well, if you put this much more than this amount of weight, we're not gonna guarantee that it holds up. Um, 
I think the second thing is going to be the electronics. You know, if you're, you know, I've had this, I've had actually had this happen on some, some of our prototype bikes where they test the bike overseas, everything works great. I bring it over here and we burn out controllers immediately. Uh, and then we get to talking about things and the test they did was with a very lightweight, short person <laughs> and not up a steep hill. And so to properly test the bikes, uh, we've had them go to like the closest mountain they can find. One person's riding the bike, you know, another person's hanging on the back on a rack somewhere. Like we're, we're loading it up with as many people as we can and then going up the hill so it can ha handle things. So uh, electronics is, is probably the second thing uh, that could potentially fail prematurely uh, just because the motor or the controller or something is being overworked. Let's see. Not a question, so I'm not counting that. I got two more questions I'm going to handle. Uh, I don't know this brand. Is it ZZ or Zyz? I don't know how you pronounce that. I haven't heard of it. Uh, support up to 500 pounds, but they want 6,000 for them. That's expensive. It doesn't need to be that expensive. I think it could be a lot less. Uh, Ted says, yes, the live worked great today. Thank you. What do you think about giving Bolton Lab membership to anyone who buys a Bolton e-bike? Uh, as much as I like the idea, it's complicated because the membership is done on YouTube and it, logistically, I don't know how I could possibly do it. So cool idea, but I don't know if the way YouTube works because a lot of the member stuff is kind of beta mode and early. Uh, I don't know if there's any way we could actually do that. So I guess that's question number two. And last one, let's make it a good one. I think this is it right here. Giovanni B, can you find a good bike carrier for two fat e-bikes for a car? Yes. Yes, you can. And I would love to make a video on this, on fat bike carriers. Uh, I'd love to get my hands on like half a dozen brands and compare them all in one video or something like that. I have been reaching out to some of these companies because some of them I can just, I can buy and resell them like any other bike shop. Uh, some of them they don't resell. Some of them they're just out of stock. Uh, but I have been talking to bike carrier brands, uh, but it, just off the top of my head, a few that I often recommend. Uh, Thule makes an e-bike, fat bike compatible rack that can handle the weight. And then, uh, now I'm drawing a blank. I'm thinking ride one up because I just did a review on one of their bikes, but one up bike racks, different company, uh, make some really nice bike racks here in the U.S. There's also another company that just recently started up. Looks very similar. They claim to be made by the same guy who designed the rack for Ride One Up. So there's another one out there. But they were just starting out this year. And I don't know if you can get your hands on one yet. It looks like they're out of stock like like everything, as, uh, as Jeff said. Uh, but... Uh, ride one up, not ride one up, one up bike racks, Thule, and then Hollywood racks is the other one that I've seen that's very common. Uh, the Hollywood rack is pretty decent. I've seen a lot of people use it. I've set them up for a few customers. There used to be one almost identical to the Hollywood rack that was on Amazon all the time. It used to be like $199, and that was the one I would recommend because it was such a good deal. But it went from one ninety nine to one to two forty nine to two ninety nine to three forty nine. The price just kept creeping up and up and up and up and up. And last I checked, it was basically the same as you know the Hollywood brand or or, or anything else. Uh, so great question on on the bike rack. Uh, another comment for Hollywood racks. Um, there's a uh, cynical zombie says, yes, make a video on different bike racks. I use a Hollywood rack. So it seems like that is a, uh, a popular one. So great questions, everybody. Uh, thank you for all of the 
comments, questions, interaction on the video today. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to end the live stream for today, uh, but we are going to do more of these. Uh, I don't know if it's going to become a regular thing, but there's a chance. Uh, I guess just just comment. Let me know if you want to see this become like like a weekly regular scheduled thing like our Thursday videos, if that's something you would uh, enjoy or participate in. Uh, I do enjoy answering your questions uh, in person like this, as much as we can be in person these days. Um, let's see. I'm just making sure there's no other uh, comments. Uh, I'll highlight this one here. Thanks, Jessica, for typing that up. Uh, and yes, thank you again for joining everyone. If you have questions, make sure to go to info at Bolton. Make sure to go to boltonebikes.com for product information. Or if you have a question, go to info at boltonebikes.com. Uh, and don't forget that in addition to YouTube, we also have the podcast that comes out every Tuesday on whatever your favorite podcasting platform is. Thanks again. And I will see you guys, uh, let's see. I got another video coming out for sure next Thursday. And who knows, maybe we'll do another live next week as well. Uh, Pedro, awesome. I see that you're a, a new member. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, everybody.